Good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome uh, to morning worship here at St. John's, and uh, welcome if you're joining us online. Uh, so, just a couple of announcements. First of all, Father Brendan is on uh, holiday at the moment, so we are grateful uh, to Father Robert and uh, Prebendary John Andrews uh, for their support at this time, uh, and John will be leading worship with us uh, this morning. Uh, can I say thanks for everyone who either attended or was involved in running the barbecue uh, last week. Uh, we weren't able to be here, we were on holiday, but we hear that despite the, uh, uh, the very warm weather, it was a great event. Uh, I can also say thank you to Sarah, Deborah, Betty, Celia, and anyone else who I've missed uh, for their work with the children's activities over uh, July and August. That's been a really positive start to some work uh, that we hope to keep, keep going. Um, right, uh, can I ask you to put a placeholder in your diary? 17th of September, um, we're, uh, I'm just going to whet your appetite. We're running an Australian evening, uh, so there'll be some social history and there'll also be some Australian wine. Uh, so if you can pop that, uh, that date in your diary and we'll be selling tickets on that uh, probably in September. And the last thing to say is there is that list at the back of church. If you would like uh, to bring cakes to celebrate an anniversary uh, any Sunday after church, if you could indicate on that, that will help our community committee plan for those events. So I think our first hymn is number 334.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, and welcome to Mass here at St John's. And welcome to those joining us at home, or who will join us later in the day. We offer the Mass this morning to the praise and glory of God, and for his Church throughout the world in its many denominations and traditions. We pray for all who seek to follow the way of Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. As we prepare to celebrate these holy mysteries together, let us recall our sins, bring them to God, and seek our Heavenly Father's forgiveness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent of mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants, and that they may obtain their petitions, make them to ask such things as shall please you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit to listen to the scripture. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord says this, I am coming to gather the nations of every language. They shall come to witness my glory. I will give them a sign and send some of their survivors to the nations, to Shat Tarshish, Put, Lud, Moshek, Rosh, Tubal and Javan, to the distant lands that have never heard of me or seen my glory. They will proclaim my glory to the nations. As an offering to the Lord, they will bring all your brothers in horses, in chariots, in litters, on mules, on dromedaries, from all the nations to my holy mountain in Jerusalem, says the Lord. Like Israelites bringing oblations in clean vessels to the temple of the Lord. And some of them I will make priests and Levites, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. And uh, it's the uh, 117th Psalm, which is very short. And the response is, go out to the whole world, proclaim the good news. Go out to the whole world, proclaim the good news. O oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Acclaim him, all you peoples. Go out to the whole world, proclaim the good news. Strong is his love for us. He is faithful forever. Go out to the whole world, proclaim the good news. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Have you forgotten that encouraging text in which you are addressed as sons? My son, when the Lord corrects you, you do not treat it lightly, but do not get discouraged when he reprimands you. For the Lord trains the ones that he loves and he punishes all those that he acknowledges as his sons. Suffering is part of your training God is treating you as his sons. Has there ever been any son whose father did not train him? Of course, any punishment is most painful at the time and far from pleasant. But later, in those on whom it has been used, it bears fruit in peace and goodness. So hold up your limp arms and steady your trembling knees and smooth out the path that you tread. Then the injured limb will not be wrenched. It will grow strong again. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we shall come to him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. 
Glory to you, O oh Lord. Through towns and villages, Jesus went teaching, making his way to Jerusalem. Someone said to him, Sir, will there be only a few saved? He said to them, Try your best to enter by the narrow door, because I tell you, many will try to enter and will not succeed. Once the master of the house has got up and locked the door, you may find yourself knocking on the door, saying, Lord, open to us. But he will answer, I do not know where you come from. Then you will find yourself saying, We once ate and drank in your company. You taught in our streets. But he will reply, I do not know where you come from. Away from me, all you wicked men. Then there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and yourselves turned outside. And men from east and west, from north and south, will come to take their place at the feast in the kingdom of God. Yes, there are those now last who will be first and those now first who will be last. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. When we hear what Jesus has to say in the Gospels, many of us, I think, will conjure up some sort of picture in our minds to help put what he says into context and try and understand what it is he's getting at. So when I read Jesus telling people to enter through the narrow door, what the authorised version calls the straight gate, my mind went to Venice and to Caletta Varisco, because Caletta Varisco is the narrowest Calais in Venice, and it's the second narrowest street in the world. It's in the Canareggio district of Venice, and, uh, uh, and you have to go down it if you want to reach the buildings that are at the other end, because there is no other way round. It's that way or not at all. And it is only 53 centimetres wide, so narrow that it is left off most of the city maps. Celia could just about manage it. But being of a portly disposition, I would have to walk sideways, and then I'd struggle. The refuse collectors can't get their wheeled collection bins down there. It's too narrow for delivery men to take their trucks. Postmen can't use their usual delivery trolleys. And how on earth people get their shopping down, I cannot imagine. The original audience of Jesus would have had a rather different picture in their minds. They would have imagined a little postern gate in a walled city. So narrow and small, that the heavenly laden merchants could not enter that without leaving all their wealth behind. The crowds pouring in through the main gates would not even notice it. In St Matthew's Gospel, the saying of Jesus is expanded. The gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter it are many. 
Now, this is one of the hard sayings of Jesus, and it should make us stop and think. Someone said to him, Sir, will there be only a few saved? In St. Luke's Gospel, Jesus, on his way to Jerusalem, has been sounding various dark warnings, warnings we really ought to hear. Alas for you, I tell you, this generation will have to answer for every prophet's blood. The master will come on a day he does not expect him, and at an hour he does not know, and will cut him in pieces and put him with the unfaithful. Unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Cut down this unfruitful tree. Why should it be wasting the soil? Hard sayings which promise judgment, a harsh judgment. Hard because St. Luke's Gospel usually puts emphasis on the compassion, the human tenderness, the mercy of Jesus. St. Luke alone records the, pro the parable of the prodigal son and the story of the repentant thief. From the beginning, Jesus has been announced as the Saviour, the Messiah, God's appointed herald of mercy and life and salvation, not just for Israel, but for the whole human race. Nevertheless, with the other Gospel writers, Luke does not hesitate to warn that not all will receive salvation. To use St Paul's language in Romans, to those who by patiently do good seek for glory and honour and immortality, he will give eternal life. While for those who are self-seeking and who obey not the truth, there will be wrath and fury. The choice is stark and it is terrible. So this man in the crowd who called out today's question, presumably in some trepidation and alarm, asked Jesus, will only a few be saved? But Jesus, as he often does, avoids the direct question and he doesn't give any direct answer. He has no intention of satisfying our curiosity about the hidden mysteries of God's will. Instead, he tells us to strive, make great effort, be single-minded in our determination. Be sure that there is only one way to life, and it's narrow, and it's difficult. The discourse of Jesus, according to St. Luke, becomes harsher yet. From the idea of a narrow door, he passes to that of the closed door. Lord, open to us, they cry. But the answer is enough to freeze the blood. I do not know where you come from. Get away from me, you evildoers. Then he says there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now these sayings are very hard for people to hear, but surely especially so nowadays. In our overly secular society, we have largely lost our sense of personal responsibility. We have lost our sense of sin. We are inheritors of the easy optimism of the 1960s, so we find it hard to accept the reality of human wickedness. We want everything to be given as a free handout and have no appetite for devoting hard effort to the work of our salvation. So we need to listen to what Jesus has to say, and we need to listen very carefully. First and foremost, he is telling us, do not presume on your salvation. Strive to attain it while even knowing that it is all a free gift from God. Now, the stakes are very high indeed. Be aware that you personally could land up among those who are counted as last and are ultimately cast out. But despite the warnings, one feature of today's popular notion of Christianity is a presumption of universal salvation. But scripture and tradition 
stand massively against that idea. We have multiple sayings of the Lord and of his apostles which explicitly deny it. But it's comfortable and it's consoling. It goes well too with the idea that everything is relative and lifestyle choices should be completely free and every exclusion must be rejected. The problem is, is if everyone is saved anyway, there would seem to be no real need to evangelise. We would struggle also to explain why anyone should bother to be especially virtuous or, or even moral. And the church without any urgent mission of salvation, would become just one more philanthropic society dedicated to making this world a little bit better place. What Jesus says in the parable of the sower, I'm sure you know it well, can surely then be applied to our times. These people have heard the word of God, but the devil has come and carried it away from their hearts in case they should believe and be saved. But today's gospel does not end on a negative note. We are left with an image of people of every description taking their place at the heavenly feast. We are reminded that if there are those now first who will be last, it's also true that the last will be first. In the light of Christ, then, we need not despair. We need not despair of the salvation of anyone the serial killer, the hopeless drug addict, the deadly terrorist, the thief, the evildoer, they can all be saved. Salvation is open to us all. We just need to reach out and take it. So what, we may ask, will happen to members of other non-Christian faiths who have faithfully followed the light as it has been revealed to them without turning to Christ? Are they lost forever? It's not our place to judge. Judgment belongs only to God. But we must remember that since Christ died for all, all are in fact called to one and the same destiny, which is divine. The Holy Spirit offers everyone the possibility of salvation. So everyone who is ignorant of the gospel of Christ but seeks the truth and does the will of God in accordance with their understanding of it can be saved. Our understanding of salvation is broad, allowing for the hope that non-Christians are saved without denying the reason for Jesus amongst us to set us free from our sins and invite us into eternal life. The lost, those who are not saved, are those who deliberately reject Christ, deliberately stop searching for the truth, deliberately fail to seek the way of God. So, we may not all be able physically to walk down Caleta Valisco or get through a postern gate with ease. But the narrow way, the narrow door is open to us. All we have to do is make the choice. May it be so. Now we stand and we declare our faith in God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now in union with Christ and in the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father. Let us pray to our Heavenly Father with quiet, still minds and steady hearts. We pray for Bishop Michael of this diocese, Bishop Martin of Chichester, who has this parish in his care, Father Brendan as he begins a well-earned holiday, Father Robert and Father John. We pray that all baptized Christians may pray without ceasing and work enthusiastically to serve the world with love and sensitivity. Lord, hear us. Lord, pray to hear us. We pray for our parish and all who live within it, especially the residents of Queen's Road, St John's Road, St John's Avenue and Hillside Road. We pray that every home in this parish may be enfolded in your love, brightened by your joy, and calmed by your unbroken peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, there are so many areas of war, unrest, and conflict in our troubled world. We pray that all disputes and misunderstandings may be brought to a settled peace based on mutual respect, honour and a concern for each other's grievances. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Bless and protect all families at risk from evil and danger, within or without. For children born with brain damage or deformity and for their families. For marriages which are strained and difficult. That wherever much is demanded, much strength and support may be given. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We have been asked to pray for Grace, Ron, Yvonne, Alfie, Ian, Kate, Evie May and family, Sharon, Derek and Beryl, Julia, Jane, David, Roy, Pauline, Julie, Mike, Oscar and Anne. We ask that any who are in great pain may be granted relief and comfort, that all whom live in constant fear or distress may be granted a real assurance of your understanding and full protection. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who have died recently, especially Brenda Plumley, and all whose anniversary falls at this time. William John Baxter, Peggy Morris, and Catherine Westcott. 
we commend to your keeping all those who have died. May they rest in your peace. God our Father, graciously hallow with your blessing this parish church. May it be a place where the sorrowing find comfort and the tempted strength, where the lonely find fellowship and the sinner forgiveness, where the faithful find grace and all offer you a holy worship. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you stand, please? God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a safe sign of peace. The hymn for the offertory, 484.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, in this bread and wine you give us food for body and spirit. May this Eucharist renew our strength and bring us health of mind and body. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <coughs> Praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who are sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life, so he fulfilled your will, and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, 
which he shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Watch over her, Lord, and guide her. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Remember, Lord, those who have died and have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, especially those for whom we would now pray. May all who sleep in Christ find in your presence light, happiness, and peace. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Blessed Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, St. John the Evangelist, our patron, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to all who receive it.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. And so draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died and lives for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. The body 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 of Christ. Body of the body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ.
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you have willed that the gate of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favour, that we who follow the path of your will may never wander from the way of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, him now, number 368. Peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. The angel of the Lord brought glad tidings to Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Bid unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, 
pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Mass is over. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.